What's going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be working with a client who came to do 30 days in-house training with me. One of the requests was firearm proficiency. The client has less than 100 rounds through any firearm in their entire life. A couple things that we're looking at here is one, we have to concern ourselves with safety and then overall uh, proficiency, getting them dialed in. We should not see any bad habits because they've never shot for any long period of time so with that being said though it does not mean that they're going to just start killing it and maintain that usually what we see when you're dealing with a new shooter is they start doing really well and shortly after you'll start seeing some anticipation it could be blinking it could be doing something like this it could be jerking the trigger breaking the wrist down to uh, prepare for that recoil so um, those are the things that i'm watching for overall i've got two overall goals personally one to ensure that we're giving the client what he needs and two for me i want to put the boy to the test what I'm looking for is how quickly can he get this uh, client dialed in with as little communication as possible, okay? Don't overthink it, don't give them too much information because you're gonna overload them and it really does you no good at this point. Number two, um, how quickly can he do it in a sense of um, round count? Doesn't matter how many rounds you shoot if you're not being proficient. So you can sit out here and say, well, rounds matter. Well, you can shoot 500 rounds or I can, control you in a manner and put 10 rounds down range and improve your shooting overall. So we're going to start you out on the uh, three yard line. I want you to aim right here. I want you to put five shots and the, now the goal is accuracy. You can go as slow as you want to, but as accurate as you possibly can. So great job. So you're either jerking or over gripping so what i want you to do is whenever you're gripping it isolate your grip meaning this becomes independent from your trigger finger so isolate this down and then this becomes its own own separate thing so now we're going to focus on one round i want you to aim at the same place come out of the holster sights on slack out squeeze that one round make sure that your grip is isolated from your trigger and then after that finger indexed and back in the holster So good job, you can see that your grouping decreased about 50%, so we're gonna keep getting you dialed in. You're gonna come up out of the holster and put your finger on the trigger. Don't pull it, I'm gonna pull it for you. We're just gonna do that for a couple rounds. Your only job is keep your sights aligned with that A, all right? Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Okay, are your sights on? So as you can see, significantly better. I mean, we're under a quarter. And so once we isolated you having your grip and your sights on target and me pulling your trigger, you can see where we're at compared to the last ones. So the way I like to explain it, it's kind of like a clutch, right? Instead of dumping it, gradually, slowly push into it. Now you don't have to pull the trigger as slow as I did, but make sure that it's as smooth as I did. Don't pulse, yeah, just, just gradually yeah. squeeze into it, all right? Okay. We're gonna do the five rounds again, but one shot, and then we're gonna come back to the holster. You're gonna do it by yourself. Pull that trigger smoothly. It doesn't have to be as slow as earlier, but really smooth and try to get as accurate as possible, all right? Okay. All right. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Make sure you keep that grip isolated from your trigger pull. Sights on, slack out, squeeze. Okay, reholster. Oh. 
so earlier we were dealing with two issues. You're, you were over gripping as you were pulling your trigger and you were jerking your trigger. We know that you can keep your sights on target. On this last round, you pretty much you got rid of that over gripping and now you just have a slight trigger jerk and we're gonna get that worked through. So I know you have more familiarity with the 19X trigger, you, you prefer them just the way they're forgiving. SIGs, with this particular trigger, it's shorter and it's lighter. That's where your trigger jerk is coming through. Isolate your grip from your trigger finger. Don't pull it and pause. Make it one smooth, continuous movement as I'm squeezing through, all right? Okay. Try again. Okay, ready? Whenever you're ready. Okay. You see how you paused? Like whenever you're pulling through it, you hit that last little bit right before it broke and then you paused. Because once you start that going through the slack and you hit that wall, Pull right through it. Don't stop on that wall. Okay. You hear a lot of people say, just use what works best for you. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you don't understand the principles on how to want run one platform, you're not going to be able to run any of them. You know. So if you don't understand the basic principles of isolating your grip from your trigger pull on the SIG, you know, it's not going to carry over to you shooting any better on a different platform. You have to understand the basics to master them all. Triggers can help mitigate those issues, like if you have a lighter trigger or a shorter trigger versus a longer, stiffer trigger, like the 320 versus the Glock, but it's just covering up the issues or masking them. It's not actually solving them or making you a better shooter. All right, so I want us to do the penny drill. And what that entails is obviously, I'm going to set that over there for safety, make sure you're clear, get a buddy check. Okay. Clear? Clear. Right? Clear. All right. So, going to take our penny after we get our firm grip, right? Make sure that's isolated. We're going to put our penny on top of our front post sight, marry our hands, put our sights on, take the slack out of the trigger, and squeeze. And the goal is to get through an effective, smooth trigger pull by keeping the penny on top of the front side post, right? So once you've got through the penny drill a couple times, I want you to find the maxim maximum amount of rate that you can pull this trigger, all right? So okay. you're just gonna progressively be pulling this faster and faster until it disrupts the barrel enough to knock the penny off the front okay. side post, right? So. Okay. There you Pull it a little bit faster this time, all right? Okay. Good job. So when we break it back down, yeah, so anytime we're, we're not pushed out on target or something like that, our finger is always on the side right here, all right? Otherwise, okay. if you're all out here, it could slip in and you could hurt yourself, man. Okay, sounds good. Same smooth trigger pull you've been doing, but pull it faster. You notice how towards the end of that trigger pull, you, you sped up through the front half, and then that last little quarter, right before it broke, you slowed down. Keep that same speed throughout that whole trigger pull, right? One consistent pull, not boom, boop. It's just one consistent thing, all right? Slack out, squeeze. Very good job. So nothing changes from back there when we were doing the penny drill to live fire, all right? The principles remain the same. Side alignment, slack out of the trigger, smooth, continuous press until the round goes off, all right? Okay. At this number two, right here at the A, we're gonna go one round at a time, all right? Okay. Whenever you're ready. Your first round, second, third, fourth, and then fifth. Okay? So on this one, you know, you stopped and then you jerked the trigger, all right? And then on this one, you were using 
too little of your pad, you do not enough on the on the trigger itself. Number three, five rounds after every shot, I want you to come back to the holster, reset, take a breath, go back to it, all right? Okay. So you can see your first five, your second five, a little bit smaller. These three, where I was pulling your trigger for you, and then your next five, again, decent. And then you got your next five here, your next, your next set here. So 33 rounds, and you can obviously see the progression. All right, guys, just something to take into consideration. Just because you go out and you shoot a lot of rounds, doesn't mean that you are a proficient or a good shooter. It is what you do with those rounds that makes you proficient. Something to also keep in mind, guys, is we started him off out at three yards and you saw the grouping size, his first set of five, all right? If we would have pushed him back to 10 or even farther, those rounds would have missed their target completely. So it's important to set yourself up for success in these training uh, scenarios. If you're gonna go out and train, don't, you know, don't waste your time, don't waste anybody else's time. Set yourself up for success, start slow, start close, and work your way back and progress. Have a great day and God bless. I interrupt this training day just to let you guys know that I did commit to the Shadow Systems MR920. They're not a sponsor. I saw it and was like, you know what? I've been wanting one for a while. They're not a bad price, a little over a thousand dollars. I figured by the time I upgrade a 19X or a Glock, um, minus my time, it's gonna be about the same price. Overall, I've shot a couple of these uh, while I'm training clients. I really like them. They've done a really good job. The only thing I wish they would do a little bit different is go ahead and stifle it just a little bit more aggressive for my liking. Most people would love this. I like it very aggressive because when you're training out in extreme heat, the sweat occurs, it does become a little bit slippier. So I did add the uh, Holison 507C with the green dot and circle combination. Green because it works better with the eyes for most people and it has an auto dimming feature. It's hot out here. I'm gonna let the boys sight this sucker in and start breaking her in. Let's have some fun. So I worked with you a little bit more, fine tuned you with, with about 10 more rounds. So I want you to give me five rounds right here in this little square. Do one at a time. Accuracy is key, but then again, as low as you need to go to make those shots. So even though you still have a slight trigger jerk, if we take this and compare it to the grouping that you did earlier, you know, it's still progress, all right? 